Hey guys, it's Tootsie, and I'm here with another video. And, um, uh, this video is most likely going to be called My Dad. And I just came on here to talk about my father. I came on here to talk about kind of try to get you guys on a more personal level. I wanted to kind of be a little more personal on my channel. That way people can connect with me more. And, um, with my dad. He passed away when I was 18 years old. I am now 21, so it's been like been like it's been over three years now like I didn't even realize it because he his um he passed away in April 2012 I believe it was the 27th I know that kind of sounds bad but you know it was my senior year in high school and I was really trying to focus on high school I wasn't really paying attention to dates anyway I'm terrible at dates I don't even know what today is I think, I think it's the 24th my computer tells me yeah yeah it's 24th oh my gosh I was correct normally I'll be like a few days off, but anyway, about my dad, um, he passed away from stomach cancer. He got diagnosed with stomach cancer when I was in the 10th grade, so like, 2010. And, um, he did go through chemo and radiation therapy, but he absolutely hated it. Oh, excuse me, I want to close my door, because it's going to be opening and closing like that. <laughs> if you can hear it. Okay, because, like, I have the window open over there, and the circulation of air is going to open and close that door. So, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but that's what I could hear. That's what it was doing. Okay, and, um, back to what I was talking about, my father. Um, he did go through the chemo range, but he absolutely hated it. It made him really sick. He didn't completely lose his hair on his head, but he lost all the other hair. He, his eyebrows were almost gone. His eyelashes were falling out. All the hair on his arm was gone. All the hair on his leg was gone. And his hair was receding, but he didn't fully lose his hair. Because he was done with radiation before, you know, all his hair went washed, which was good. And he was considered cancer-free. It was considered that the cancer that was left like it last treatment it kind of flaked off but it was like I don't know the word irremissible or something like that like it wasn't going to be able to do anything it was like it was like weak it wasn't completely dead but it wasn't going to be able to reproduce or like spread and so he went on with his life and he and but my father he also had like mental sickness which started when I was in seventh grade and so and so he wasn't a unable to work for a long time he wasn't actually able to work since then and so my mom was a sole provider for our house so it was very hard for having one income of three people when my parents who when they got together they had a good source of income they had good jobs and they were living in their means of the time but then like when my mom another time my mom lost her job at another point a really good job and so she had to work go back working at subway and she because she lost her good job and well, that, that was, like, back when I was in elementary school before all this, and my dad also lost his job, and then my dad found a new one, not as good as pay, and my mom found a good job, but then my dad got mentally sick, and then, like, you know, he lost a job. So it was always, like, up and down with us with uh, our financials. It was, like, we could be good, we could be bad. It was up and down, but my dad started getting really stressed, and that started really affecting mentally, and um, it was really hard when he also got physically sick with the cancer because that really hurt him. And so, and, like, after he had his treatment that said he was done, like I told you, he did pass away of it because in my senior year, he found out that the cancer came back and it had spread anoxonomical. It was, like, because it was in his, he had stomach cancer and it was in his esophagus. So it was basically in the back of his throat all the way down to his stomach. His whole esophagus was with cancer. And so... He did not want to go through radiation treatment again. He chose not to. And my dad, he was always one of those people. He did not like going to the doctors. He didn't think doctors knew what they were talking about. He didn't think they could know the stuff they do. He just, he didn't think it was possible. That was just my dad's choice. He chose not to go through the cancer. And so he slowly got really sick. And with his cancer, he, it was hard for him to swallow food. So he was unable to eat. So he got really thin and really sick. And it was really hard my senior year because I was, I was really stressed out. And, um, 
and my, my boyfriend and I now, we were kind of rocky at the time, our relationship, it was, like, we, we, were, we were together, but, you know, we were, you know, it was a little stressful at the time, we, we, you know, if you are in a relationship, you know, every time, every relationship has up and downs, and we were going through a down, we were just going through some rocky parts of our relationship at that time of point, because we we're both in our senior year, we we're both stressing, we really, you know, he was stressing, because, you know, since he had to switch schools in 11th grade, like, he had to really make sure, he had to try to make sure that he would be able to graduate in time. You know, I was stressed out because I was wondering, oh my gosh, what am I going to do after school and stuff. So it was just such a stressful time, and it was really hard when my dad passed away. But the one thing, it's kind of like, I knew he was going to pass away. I knew he was going to die eventually. I just didn't know when. And a lot of people did not realize or know how sick he was like he was unable to eat his last few weeks um when he got really sick he started um started throwing up blood and we took him to the ER several times and he finally got admitted and his doctor was actually very upset that he wasn't admitted one of the first times we took him to the ER because like the ER people said oh he's not coughing up enough blood but it, it wasn't like spit like Sometimes it was just like a spit of blood, or sometimes it was like an enormous amount of blood. So we were very upset too. And my dad, he got a little better in the hospital where he was able starting to eat, and he really wanted to come home. And the doctor didn't want to let him, but my dad, stubborn as he was, he really wanted to come home. And after he came home, he got really, really sick. We got in. We got. He had to get his own medical bed. We had to put that in our living room and. And we had to have the in-home nurses come in and, you know, they noticed my dad had the signs of dying. Because, like, when you work in the medical field, there's signs of someone dying. There's the signs of someone dying. And one of them is that you start seeing your past relatives. You start seeing your relatives that have passed away and he had started seeing them. He didn't mention it because my father, he always been kind of weird about that sort of things growing up. He never was sure about ghosts or spirits or people have passed away. And the nurse is like, you know, your father, I think he's seen, as my mom was at work and I was the only one home, you know, if I remember home, he was, I think he's seen people who passed away and I'm like, cause I can tell that he is and I can tell that he's scared. I'm like, yeah, that would be my father. He would be very scared. He would be very frightened cause he just never was really sure of that stuff. And so I always wondered like what family members he saw because both his parents have passed away in the few years before. My grandmother, I think his mother passed away in seventh grade when I was in when I was in seventh grade, so two thousand seven. And then and then his father was it yeah, his father died in two thousand ten, the same year he got cancer and so but my father he was also very close to one of his uncles, his uncle and his uncle died when he was 18 he always talked about my, his uncle to me and it was very hard for him when he died and so I just my dad since also when he started dying it was really hard for him to talk and speak so I really wish I could ask him who he saw but I didn't get a chance to because he wasn't able to talk back to me and a lot of people around who knew my father was dying they didn't know how sick he was you know they didn't some people didn't even know that we had nurses in our house, like one nurse at a time. It was like one that came in the morning, one that stayed all night, evening. And it was like, you know, it, it was just really hard. I just decided to make this video just so, like, I can make my channel more on a personal level so people can connect with me personally. Because that's how I kind of realized how when I watched YouTube was how I like them is that they talk about something that's very personal. And it's like you can relate to it. So I wanted to talk about, like in my last video, I talked about my disabilities, you know. And that was a long video. I didn't even talk about everything about it, you know. Like there's one thing I didn't mention about dyslexics. We can't tell our right from our left hands. And like this L thing doesn't help because we see things backwards. It, it looks the same to us. I, I do know my right and my left because I remember I write with my right hand. 
because I write with my right hand. So I, that's how I remember my right and my left. But like when I'm like driving somewhere or I'm thinking of something, I don't think I got, I'm going to turn right. I think, okay, I'm turning that way or I'm turning that way. I turn the wheel to the way I want to go. I don't think about I'm turning right. I got to turn the wheel right. I don't think about it that way. I don't think about going clockwise or counterwise. I just think about the direction I'm going. If that makes any sense. It's kind of a little off topic about my dad. But um, I love my dad. And we were very close. We were actually very similar in people. Like we're shy around people and stuff. Like we don't like being around big groups. We like being in small groups. Being like kind of like an intimate small group. People we're really close with. Like me. I mean I, I, I do like going to parties. But most of the parties I ever went to. We're very small groups, and if the parties were big, you know, I usually kind of latched on to the people that I knew real well and was close to. I kind of was trying to be with them the whole time, the whole night, because I did not like being around new people because, like, with parties, if I get excited, I start acting kind of weird and, like, people who are really close to me, they know that's me. But people who don't maybe know me, it's seen as weird. And, so, and my dad was the same way. You know, he would start getting really weird around a lot of people. And people thought he was kind of crazy when he wasn't. He was just himself. Or he just did not like being around a lot of people. And so that's how me and my dad were really close. We both didn't like being around lots of people and stuff. And my dad, you know, he was kind of outdoorsy he liked to go fishing he liked to camp and so did we but we mainly went up to our cabin we didn't really camp camp ever but our cabin you know it doesn't it's not a luxury cabin my grandfather built it um after world war Two. after he got out of because he was in world war Two. after his um after his serving in the military was up you know after he was done serving in the military oh he was in the navy that's why he was in the navy after he was done serving in the navy he he went with this cabin and this cabin was built there was no electricity no running water there wasn't even a bathroom the outhouse was outside my grandfather did add a bathroom add on and he did install electricity but you know it's just like a few lights it's just like a light in each room it wasn't astronomical exciting or anything and like there is a tv up there but it's a little teeny little tv and it gets one channel even with the dvr thing they have now it still gets one channel and that's it it does not still have running water you, there's a pump inside like if you ever seen those old pumps from a from an old farm that's the kind of pump and we have to pump water and we dump a bucket down the water down the toilet to get it to flush some people call that gross, but I just, that, I grew up with that, you know, I grew up with going to the cabin like that, so that to me, it's not gross to me, that's just how it was, that it's just how it was, that's how our cabin was, and so I still, like, you know, and so we, me and dad, but we both loved going up there because it was nice and quiet and where our cabin was it was on a private lake this lake it had no after no open access to the public so only people who own it can go on that lake you know so it was really nice you know it was nice and quiet there wasn't lots of people around it was nice and quiet it's kind of similar how my dad and i would go kind of and blabbering on you know i i it's like i noticed that like when i finished talking about my dad and his cancer and how he died it was pretty short because you know I don't know why it was short so I kind of talked about more about how me and my dad are similar so I just wanted to make this video so you know get to know me on a personal level and so I hope you know you can understand you know and so and um what else did I know someone else I want to talk about oh and um you know, me and my mom, we're doing okay with it, you know. It's been over three years, you know. So, we're doing fine if, I know, maybe some people might wonder if my mom will ever date again. I mean, she did go on a dating site, and I'm happy with it, you know. She, I want her to be happy, so if she finds somebody, you know, or if she has, I'm happy for her. You know. I mean, you know, the person who she ever finds, she's never going to replace my dad. You know, we would just have some sort of friendship, you know, but that's it.
Um, I just want to come on here and talk about a little bit into my private life. So I'll see you guys in my next video. So you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the same way it's about down there. And I will see you guys in my next video. And don't forget to subscribe and like up this video. Bye!